Hello everyone, my name is Stanley St. Rose, and today we're going to be talking about Roman Fever, written by Edith Wharton. Uh, now, before I go into summary analysis of this work, please remember to leave a like, subscribe, and or comment so that the channel can continue to grow. Um, Roman Fever is one of my favorite short stories, I think. It's just, <laughs> it's jam-packed with information. Um, it's a story that it's a short story that you could probably create several videos on because the the characters are so complex um, and there's so many layers to them. They're kind of like onions. They're onion characters. I like to call them. Um, my my favorite characters in literature, uh, you know, they're, they're onions because I mean you can read the book over and over again and every time you'll probably find an, another tit or tat uh, on um, how significant a character is. So Roman Fever, from the get-go, it is not playing. It is significant. It, it, there's a battle that is raging. There is a battle that is raging. I mean, just look at the name of, of the short story, Roman and Fever. I mean, the Roman Empire was not something you messed with. Uh, the Roman army was not something you messed with. It was deadly, and it killed uh, its enemies efficiently. The word fever is not something you mess with because fevers, you know, <laughs> it's something that, that, that's quite deadly. A fever, you don't mess with a fever. If you have a fever that's too high, you better find a, a solution to it or what's causing it fast because uh, a fever is not something you mess with. So, from the title of this work alone, we know that, you know, what's about to happen is, is going to be intense and uh, we need to pay attention. So... From the get-go, we we are, we're introduced to two characters that <laughs> they don't they're not really the type of characters that are worrying about money. They're not really the type of characters that um, you know they, they they have money. They have a lot of money. We're we're told that they live in Manhattan. They live um, they're part of the upper class, the the one percent of Manhattan society. Uh, these two women that we meet within the short story, um, we spend most of the time with them. Well, well pretty much all of the time with them. Um, the setting of this short story is in a restaurant with a terrace in, in Rome, Italy. And pretty much we get this intense battle, this, this raging war in a restaurant. Um, and w Which is very fascinating because you would you have to read read carefully and word by word um and it really pick up on all, all the shade and 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 <laughs> the i like to i like to call them quiet stabs and quiet swords that are being s swung um and what's being said because i mean even the stresses of words i mean even the stresses of words are you know they're significant within this work so i mean you really got to pay close t close detail when you read this this work by edith wharton um because every word packs a punch and and read it line by line and just you know get to the to the bottom of what's going on here um so you know i'm gonna go into the summary and then give you guys a, an analysis and deeper uh well my my perspectives on, on this work so the story begins with um these two women, of course, they're in Rome. Uh, they're they live in New, uh, in America. They live in Manhattan, but they're in Rome. They're in on vacation, and they just finished having lunch. One is named uh, Mrs. Ansley, and one is named Mrs. Slade. We learn that they're both widows. Um, Mrs. Ansley's husband, by the name of Horace, uh, he he's dead, and Mrs. Um, Slade's um, husband, by the name of of Delphin is dead um, so you know they're both widows they both have a daughter um, Ansley's daughter's name is Barbara and Slade's daughter's name is Jenny um, and pretty much um, th these characters are very much intertwined and pretty much like Ansley's life and Slade's life they've been lived side by side i mean they live across the street from each other they they you know they knew each other ever since childhood they were raised together they've been friends they've been lifelong friends like intimate know everything about one of the other types of friends right um 
very close, very close. And and the thing that's significant about this the short story is that we get um, little bits and pieces about what's going on. Um, well, we get a lot of information about what's going on in Miss and Slade's head and Mrs. Slade's head. Wow, Mrs. Slade's head. Wow. Um, yeah, we get a lot of information that's 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 going on um, in Slade's head, and and you know we we're not really given that much into um, Ansley's um, mind, but a, a lot is revealed. A lot is revealed. So, Mrs. Slade and Mrs. Ansley, um, they're having lunch. Um, their daughters, Barbara and Jenny, they actually go off because you know they're young. The the, the Roman moon is out, and you know young people are in love, and and they're chasing after romance. So they go live their lives and and chase after men while. Mrs. Ansley and Mrs. Slade, they stay at this restaurant and they're they're looking at um, Roman like ancient uh, uh, Roman structures and and important buildings um, that like the 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 Colosseum. Uh, for me, um, where you know battles and executions you know take place, you pay attention to that because they can see the Colosseum. They can see that arena for battle right they, they just finished having lunch i mean when you're done having lunch i guess it's a great time for a battle you know so they're done having lunch and, and, and instead instead of leaving the restaurant where there's this terrace and they can they, they can see this wonderful view from this terrace um they stay in the restaurant they slayed you know she's very confident so she she pretty much tells a waiter you know the head waiter that we're gonna stay here and and you know gives them money and so they they stay in the restaurant pretty much until um, um, dinner time and they're they're gazing at the the you know ancient Rome these wonderful buildings this wonderful view and the sky and all these beautiful things about Rome and um, they start talking now before they start talking Barbara, um, Ansley's daughter, who is vivacious and, and brilliant and intelligent and this woman that, you know, men should want or men want. And it's according to the times because Jenny and, and Barbara, like, it's kind of like Slade. We get a lot of Slade's opinion. So it's kind of like, you know, Jenny is, is pretty, but Barbara is vivacious and dangerous and, and, and edgy while Jenny is quiet and responsible and, and somewhat boring and and slate is like man i wish my daughter was more vivacious and exciting like 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 barbara um so 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 slade slade is very much um jealous of um of barbara of mrs ansley and her daughter because you know jenny's is, is is kind of boring so pretty much the story goes on and what happens is the the, the the daughters leave and Ansley and Slade they stay um, they stay in the restaurant and they start talking they're talking they're talking and pretty much what you get is Slade starts to pick at something that is somewhat uncomfortable now Ansley Mrs. Ansley she's knitting and because like Barbara t tells this joke to Jenny saying that you know our mothers have nothing else to do in life they just you know have to knit and Ansley pulls out her knitting stuff and starts to knit after that joke is said and the the, the young girls they go off and in, 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 into their adventures um, so Ansley uh, Mrs. Ansley she's she's knitting and Slate is talking and Ansley is kind of like using the knitting to like cover her face and, and to hide her emotions behind what she's knitting because at several points um, within the short story like what she's knitting is sometimes it's on her lap and sometimes it's way up to her nose and she's like really focusing on knitting and, and really getting those close details um, which which says a lot about um, Ansley and close details and, and paying attention to things and because um, knitting knitting is a very you have to pay attention when what you're knitting and what you're doing and and what lines you because like literally think about it when you're knitting you're literally putting lines together to create something you're you're putting string together and and creating something out of string um, so you know that that 
that requires an, um, a very significant amount of detail and um, you know paying attention to what you're doing. So Ansley's doing that throughout the conversation, and Slade is talking, and pretty much they start talking about Delphin. Now, Delphin is Mrs. Slade's uh, husband. He's dead, and you know. Along the conversation, Slade brings up this I, this old story that Ansley told her about an aunt that she had that, you know, sent her sister out, um, like, in Rome, and the sister got Roman fever, and she, she died, and the reason why all this happened is because the aunt was kind of afraid that the sister was going to steal her, um, her man, you know, her lover from her, and so she, she, the aunt sends the sister out, sister dies because of love, because of this this sort of rivalry that existed between the aunt and the sister, so, you know, Slade kind of brings this up, and, and Ansley kind of like she hides her emotions because she's doing the knitting and she, she kind of like in, in of a way pretends like she's not really that invested into the conversation so little by little the conversation keeps going deeper and deeper and and we can see that Ansley is well from my perspective at least I kind of see like it's kind of like she's getting more uh, you know she's she's shy she's quiet and and slate is just driving something home driving something home driving something home um and i'm telling you even the stresses on certain words because um when they're talking and they're talking about the beauty of rome um you know ansley says you know rome will always be beautiful i'm paraphrasing here but ansley says you know rome will always be beautiful to me and Slade, you know, she like she like taken back, and she's like, "Why is there a little, a little stress there on the me part? Like, why why is there a little stress there?" So, you know, the words that are that are being used within this work, um, within Roman Fever, we gotta really pay attention to them because sometimes it's just the little tiny little stresses on certain words that hold a lot of significance. Um, so, you know. What Slade does next is that she says, um, you know, do you remember when we were young and we were here and, you know, I was with Delphin and, and you know, uh, you got a letter and Ansley's like, what? Wait, wait, what, what, what? What do you mean? And pretty much Slade, Mrs. Slade reveals this to, to Ansley about this letter that um, Ansley received from Delphin um, and that Slade's tells Ansley that it wasn't from Delphin, it was from, from her. So Slade wrote this letter to Ansley, pretty much saying that, you know, Delphin, because like she's, uh, Slade is talking in Delphin's voice, or writing as if she was Delphin, saying that, you know, I, I, I want you to meet me here at this Coliseum, because, you know, uh, things of love and interest and romance and things like that. So... Ansley receives this letter from a long time, over 25 years ago, and she actually writes back to Delphin. And is like, okay, I'm gonna meet you, and you know, they they meet each other in this coliseum. Now, the thing is, that's how Ansley remembers it. Slade doesn't, you know, know all of this because what happens is Slade writes this letter to Ansley, and in her mind, she is tricking her. Right in her mind, she writes this letter to Ansley because she is, you know, she's jealous of Ansley. And when she was young, because Ansley is beautiful, she's attractive, um, and she doesn't want competition for Delphin. And so she sends this letter to Ansley to kind of like get rid of her. Um, Ansley actually goes to the Coliseum, and she actually like th there's this recollection of her of Ansley being sick. Um, and so Slade, in her mind, she thinks that she's better, she thinks that she's higher, she thinks that she's just more important, more significant, more, um, you know, just, just better, just all around better than Ansley, and Ansley doesn't see it that way. Um, there's even this little line within this work that says each of these women are looking at each other through their little telescopes, um, through the wrong end, and you gotta, like, take a second to kind of think about what that means because the line specifically says that 
they're looking at each other like like I'm paraphrasing again they're looking at each other um, at through their little telescopes from the wrong end so when you think about a telescope there's you look at the little the little end and the 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 bigger the wow the bigger end is at the other side and you're, and you're looking at um, you know what's on the other side but these women so it's almost like they're looking through the bigger end um, and the other side is the smaller end so they're looking at each other um, from their own perspectives and they both see each other as small right there's they both see each other as small so you know this short story is very complex because you really got to focus on the words um, and, and less you know more on the words and, and less on actions because the words are very they pack a punch um, so both of these women have their own opinions of each other and they know each other very well right uh, and that's another thing that makes this this um, story so complex because these women they know each other well okay they grew up with each other they live across the street from each other um, and they both had this passionate feverish love for the same man for Delphin because um, we know that Slade wrote a letter to Ansley to get rid of her so that she can she can like figure out her feelings for Delphin so that she can be with Delphin um, Ansley gets this letter and she writes to Delphin saying okay I'm gonna meet you because she thinks that it's the real Delphin that sent it um, sent the letter uh, but it, it wasn't of course um, Delphin actually replies to Ansley and says okay like well she he doesn't reply to Ansley but he meets her there at the Coliseum um, so I, I hope you're staying with me here because because this is the, it's a lot of back and forth um, so Ansley and Delphin they do meet at the Coliseum to them like they start an affair right they start an affair um, well, I mean, I guess Delphin and, and, and Slade, they were dating. It, they weren't married yet, but it's still, you know, Ansley and, and Slade, they're, they're, at that time, they're both friends. Um, Mrs. Slade was seeing Delphin at the time. So, I mean, if your friend is seeing someone, they're, they're dating, you know, leave that person alone. Uh, that person alone. Uh, but, but Ansley didn't feel like, feel that way. So, it's an affair. Um... Ansley and Delphin, they have their affair behind um, Slade's back, Mrs. Slade's back. Um, and basically, Slade doesn't know about this, and she doesn't know about it for over 25 years. Um, and throughout that entire period of 25 years, Slade always keeps on thinking that she's better than Ansley, for one thing she feels like she won the war she feels like she tricked Ansley she tricked Mrs. Ansley and, and she made her go to an empty coliseum and so she always throughout her life throughout the 25 the, the 25 year period that she was married to Delphin Slade just always felt that she made Ansley do something stupid um, and Ansley should pay for it because that was her man and Ansley was trying to get out get in her way but Ansley doesn't see it like that because she wrote wrote to Delphin in reply of that letter and since Delphin got that reply he meets her at the Coliseum and things go down romantically so in this restaurant all of this was revealed to us and Slade reveals to Ansley now that it wasn't Delphin that wrote the original letter it was her and Ansley being very meticulous burned the original letter but since it was Slade Mrs. Slade who wrote it not Delphin um, Slade pretty much recites it back to her I really hope you guys are staying with me here because I know this is probably I'm, I'm like confusing, but keep let, let's just keep going. Um, so Slade repeats all of this to Ansley, like recites this letter to Ansley, 
And Ansley's shocked to the point where she had her all her knitting and she like literally stands up and all of that stuff fall to the ground and now both of these women are looking at each other shocked because and, but but the thing is like Ansley is shocked that it wasn't Delphin that wrote the original letter. Slade is is kind of like, you know, licking her lips because she's like, I got you. You didn't know I I had you, but I got you. It was me that tricked you. Because in her mind she got Ansley, Slade in her in Slade's mind, in Mrs. Slade's mind, she got Ansley, but to to Ansley, she never got got, because she had her she had her affair. And since Mrs. Slade reveals this to Ansley, now Ansley reveals to Slade that I wrote a reply, and Slade, this revelation, just like what you wrote a reply. That and she says that that never came across my mind, but now. So since Mrs. Slade just stabbed and, and swung a sword saying that original letter for, was for me, now Ansley swung a sword, uh, wow, swung a sword saying, well, I wrote a reply and I did see him at a coliseum. And so now the truth is revealed that Ansley and Delphin had an affair and Slade is, is mad and pissed. And now in the restaurant, I mean, it's getting closer to, to dinner time and uh, the new, you know, the, 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 the dinner rush is coming in and they're like, maybe we should go, maybe we should go do something else and things like that. And Ansley, kind of, Ansley says to Slade, to Mrs. Slade, that I feel sorry for you. And so, you know, she's arrogant, she's she's prideful, she knows that she's she's from money, and she's just, she's, she, she carries herself up high. She says, sorry for me? I mean, I was married to Delphin for 25 years. I You, you had him for one night, I had him for 25 years. Um, but another piece of information that's very significant is that Ansley got married two months quickly after this whole endeavor with Delphin because because she got pregnant right and she got married to a man by the name of Horace because she needed to hide that pregnancy because again during this time when when during the time that this essay well, well this short story was being written you know you don't want to be part of a scandal especially when you're when you're, when you're part of the uh, one percent of society when you when you're pregnant when you're having a child it better be from your husband so Anzi she gets pregnant by Delphin she hides the pregnancy by quickly mar marrying somebody by the name of Horace Horace dies and I guess he dies without knowing one lick of what was really what was why you know he got why his marriage to Ansley happened and um, <laughs> all of this gets revealed to Slade, and Slade is like she's still holding on to the fact that you know, well, yeah, yeah, you had him, you had him for a night, I had him for twenty-five years, you you have nothing, I had him for longer, ha ha ha. And then when Ansley turns to leave the restaurant, um, she says, "Well, I." have Barbara mic dropped like or you know paraphrasing again um I had Barbara I have Barbara mic dropped like the mic no the mic was destroyed the mic was, was broken down and torn into pieces because this just reveals to 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 Slade that Barbara is Delphin's daughter and pretty much you know Jenny's sister yeah well not pretty much just that's just is like, like Jenny's half-sister because both girls are the daughters of Delphin the man that both of these best friends loved and the truth is revealed to Slade that her husband before they got married well I guess not her husband uh, but for our purposes, her husband had a child with Ansley, her best friend. She didn't. She never knew about it for 25 years of marriage. 
you know, because Delphin was a lawyer, a corporate lawyer, you know, had a lot of international cases, very famous, very popular. And um, he had a daughter living across the street for 25 years. And Delphin never told his wife, Mrs. Slade, that, well, maybe he didn't even know. Oh, my God. That's just, that's just, I just thought about that. Maybe because like Ansley's a very meticulous, like she's very thorough and calculated, you know, very meticulous. She knows what she's doing. I mean, I guess, you know, be be aware of people who knit, you know, they, they really pay attention to patterns and, you know, creating something and making something and, and you know, forming something from nothing to something. And maybe Delphin never even maybe he, does, he didn't even know that Barbara was his daughter because it, it really tells us that as soon as their their affair happened Ansley quickly gets married to Horace to hide the pregnancy so maybe she even hid it from the, the true father maybe Horace you know in his life just went on believing that Barbara was his daughter. So, <laughs> man, I'm t like this short story has so many layers to it. Um, so the mic is dropped, and Slade is pretty much left stunned because she thought this little frail, shy, self-effacing woman had no com like she wasn't complex, she wasn't anything higher than her or anything equal to her. But for 25 years, she had a daughter with her husband. She hid a pregnancy from from Horace. She carefully, you know, had you know, this affair in war in, in Rome with Mrs. Slade's husband and 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 who knows what whatever, whatever things she she's done behind behind Mrs. Slade's back who knows and Mrs. Slade is just completely shocked um yeah I mean that's the that's the summary of the short story now let's go into the analysis into the deeper meaning here um Whew, where do we begin? I mean, my goodness. Um. So okay, let's let's begin with Slade, Mrs. Slade. I mean, we get we get a lot of information about her and what she's thinking. Um, from the get go, we know that you know she comes from the money. She has the money. She has the the prestige. She carries herself very high. Her color is high. Um, all, everything about her is is you know rights and confidence. And I'm better than everybody else. Um. She does that to the waiter. She does that to Ansley. She does that to, to everybody. Uh, but the thing is, like, she thinks she's higher than Ansley, but she's not. Um, and, 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 I mean, there are other things that, um, you know, she's she's hiding from and other things in her life that she's masking from. Because we learned that she, she had a son that died um, young, uh, you know. Delphin's son that kind of like had all his gifts he died young and as a mother that's very tough that's very tough to, to lose a son and when Delphin was alive uh, Mrs. Slade could um, could bear but when Slade when when Delphin dies and the son dies it, it was a lot for her to, to to carry by herself and so the only person that she had left was was Jenny but Jenny didn't really need that much help to you know to do what's necessary um or you know to to live a good life um so mrs slade she just had this power that she you know wheeled on top of ansley's head for so long and she thought ansley was nothing but ansley is just you know complex and she's doing a lot of things behind her the scene or i guess we can say behind um her knitting um, because she's very careful. I mean, throughout the short story, she hides her emotion very accurately, very efficiently from Slade by just, you know, 
um, lifting up her her knitting to her you know to her face and cut like pretty much covering her face so that Slade would never see her true emotions and what she really thought um, and when Slade you know was pretty much going f for that 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 um, sudden death kill and and telling her you know uh, you were trying to steal my man I got you I wrote you this letter I, f I had you believing for 25 years that you know you had something going off my right that you know you had something going on that that my, my husband was interested in you but he really wasn't and um, you know Ansley comes in and says like well no well listen uh, we did have something going on we even had a daughter behind your back <laughs> oh god Oh my god, I mean, tw a quarter of a century to do that to your best friends. Again, these women are best friends, intimate best friends, know everything about each other. Uh, like, I mean, there's even a line that says, like, when the curtain, the, I think the curtains or the drapes, like, this is a detail that I, you know, I really, I didn't really focus on, but I, there's a, there's a line that says, like, if... There's drapes or curtains that's changed in somebody somebody's house, or if Slade changes her curtains, Ansley knows, or or Ansley changes her curtains, or um, you know Slade knows. So they know every detail, every tit and tat about each other's lives, and this massive secret of Barbara's father, of the affair, of you know that was hidden for so long and, and both of them were keeping secrets from each other um, Slade was keeping the secret of the the true um, uh, you know uh, offer of the letter and Ansley never revealed to her until now that she wrote a reply um, which I mean I guess you, you should probably think about that um, so you know this is this is a very 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 significant very deadly story and I mean this is an all-out battle and this is a battle that raged on for over 25 years um, because these women have been you know fighting in jealousy uh, forever I mean we could we even know that um, Slade is jealous of Barbara because of because she's vivacious and intelligent and brilliant and she wishes that her daughter could be more vivacious and brilliant and intelligent like like you know like Barbara but that's not the case, and you know th these women been are have been fighting for for this. You know they 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 fought for the same man. Horace is just you know he's just an outsider. Um, they fought for Delphin, and um, Slade now wants Barbara, but you know that's not her daughter. Um, that is her husband's uh, daughter, but not her daughter. Um, and there's so much jealousy, right? I mean, Roman fever, it's its malaria. That's an actual sickness, disease. I mean, people would get. Uh, that's that's like people actually died of, of, of that, you know, malaria, Roman fever. But the fever here is this jealousy, this rage, this, this Roman fever, like this, this, this jealousy that exists between these two best friends that, that raged on. Um for a very long time and and it still exists Slade is is has this jealousy of Barbara you know she's wishing that her daughter could be more like Barbara and 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 Ansley I guess we can even say that I mean she had the the affair with um, with Delphin uh, but she didn't get Delphin for 25 years I mean you can you can say that living across for the from the man that you love for over 25 years watching them day in and day out go to this other woman is not a fun thing i'm pretty sure ansley was 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 jealous for those 25 years and um she had to just you know exist with horace but i'm pretty sure that hurt that hit like that was something that hurt um to watch the person you truly love live right across the street and, and go to home to this other woman um and, and i mean I, I guess that kind of reveals a little something deep about friendship uh, sometimes your closest friend being best friends with someone sometimes it can be quite deadly because you might be so close to that person and you start competing for the same wants 
uh, and these women, they were competing for the same man. I mean, they, they both had children by the same man. They both live across the street from each other. They both, you know, their lives are intertwined. And now together, they have a set of daughters. So now, um, you know, it's it's just so... Oh my, I, I mean, it's a lot. It's a lot. It is a lot. Um, so, the short story pretty much ends with that with that mic drop. Um, and we see how complex these characters are. I mean, Ansley is not a shy and self-effacing character as um, you would think. She is very complex. She's always, she's working behind the scenes. Um, she's, she's a wolf in sheep's clothing. Uh, uh, because she she planned a lot of things with without her best friend, the person who knows her very well. Um, I mean, her daughter, t you know, says that you know her mother Barbara calls Mrs. Um, Ansley like a knitter, a person who's not you know who's easy to know, but she is not easy to know at all. She is not easy to know at all, and she she's very complex. And behind her knitting, she's hiding a lot of things. I mean, she even knows how to hide her emotions accurately. Slade thought she was the boss, but she is not the boss. She is not superior in in any way. Um, and Ansley reveals that to her by that that um, earth quaking mic drop. Um, so, I mean, this short story is just um, so rich, so rich, and it's it is a battle. It is a battle. I mean, the setting is the terrace of a restaurant, looking. Um, you know, <laughs> looking at Roman structures, uh, important Roman um, buildings, and for me, I, I like to focus on that uh, the Colosseum, um, and, and think about those gladiators I used to fight in there. And these women have been in the, have been in a battle ever since childhood because they've been um, feverish and jealous of each other ever since they were a kid, ever since they were children. Um, so that that's my perspective on this work that's what I had to say about it and that's what's significant about it um, you know fr from my point of view um, wow wow just just really interesting really jam-packed and and there's honestly there's so much more to this short story um, I just want I just don't want to go on forever with this video uh, but these characters th they're onions I mean you can peel them and keep on peeling them and keep on peeling them. Uh, because they're that significant. Uh, so please remember to leave a like, subscribe, and or comment. And I'll see you guys in the next video.